want to welcome the prophet in the house, the man of God, who have moved with God for many years. And in the morning, in the first service, Bishop Kerry told us about him through Pastor John. So Bishop Kerry is an old man, Hi. and he confirmed to us that we are receiving the great man of God in the world. So we are privileged. We cannot even uh, touch his shoes, but by the grace of God, we welcome you, sir. Come. There's a power of the Lord come down. Oh, let the power of the Lord come down. Let the power of the Lord of heavens come down. Let the power of the Lord come down. Appreciate the man of God. Praise please. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome, sir. some things to say the Lord wants me to say, and I, I want to get into it. Amen? Okay, uh, I brought my, my book here. You could get it tonight. Wonderful book, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living, and the foreword is written by our beloved Archbishop Harrison Nanga, and he thought so much about me. He wrote three entire pages about the prophetic grace, about the impact of our ministry, and uh, it's worth getting the book just to read what he wrote. But this book is loaded with principles for success. And I think uh, first we have the Bible, okay, <laughs> which is the best-selling book of all time. This is the greatest book that was ever written in human history. There is no greater book on earth, I don't care what it is, that is greater than this book. It's the bestseller of all time. It's even, I believe, uh, had a, the exact number, maybe more than a billion or billions in print, I heard. It's not just millions, it's more than that. And there's no other book that has been printed like that, except the Holy Bible. You have your Bible, lift it up to God and say, God, let me live what's in this book. Hallelujah. So... And after that, you need to have my book. If you got to heaven and you hadn't gotten it, I think the angels would ask you, uh, excuse me, did you read the prophet's book? <laughs> if you say no, they might go, ooh, you missed something. All right, now, God wants to teach us how to be successful. Say amen. All right, I can go several directions here, but I want to get into the prophetic flow. And uh, in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1 and 2, there's a great couple of passages, uh, verses of scripture there. Nehemiah 1.5 said, Lord, I pray... I pray to the Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, that you will keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. Please, Lord, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now day and night. Then we go over to the second chapter, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. And the Bible declares that um, he said, let us rise up and build. King James said, arise and build. New King James said, let us rise up and build. Then they that set their hands to this good work. There's another scripture in Nehemiah that says, God, give us a people with a mind to work. And then these two idiots, Sambalat and Tobiah, they 
wanted to oppose what Nehemiah wanted to do, and they laughed at him, and despite, he said they laughed at us and despised us. This was the testimony of the prophet Nehemiah, who was going to rebuild something great. And he said, what is this thing that you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? And Nehemiah answered this. He said to them, the God of heaven himself will prosper us, and therefore we his servants will arise and build, but you will have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. You'll have nothing, but we'll have everything. Lift your hands, say the devil's people and his ugly friends. <laughs> the devil and his ugly friends will have nothing, but we're going to have everything. And, you know, this, this is a season where you have to make your calling and election sure. Second Peter 1, 9 said, make your calling and election sure, for if you do this, you'll never stumble. Or in other words, even if you trip along the way and have some setback, you'll get up and keep going and God will be with you. The biggest blessing anyone could ever have is to have the favor of God, the favor of God, his power and his presence working for you. And the problem, uh, your pastor asked me this afternoon after the morning service, and he said, uh, I wonder what's happening in Kenya. I said, I spoke about it in the meeting. How many were here this morning? How many were here this morning? I said it. They're corrupt, and they grieved the Holy Spirit, and he left them. And the problem is, uh, Bishop, my friend here, my old friend who I'm seeing again after how many years, I don't know, it's 15 years at least. The Lord said, or however many, the Lord said, uh, you know, you've grieved me and because of your, your, your perverse and corrupt ways. But the problem is people know how to do church. They know how to have their greed and their system and they make it like a business, like an organization and it runs even without the presence of God. <laughs> but God, God, he, he can't, you know, he can't handle people the way they are. He'll leave you right there where you are. The only place you can get fired in the world and keep working is in the church. God could have fired you as his servant, amen? But you still keep carrying on. You're working, but without his presence, without his anointing. And what kind of foolishness is that? Jesus said what? He said, without me, you can do nothing. And he said, I no longer call you my servants in John 15. He said, but I call you my friends. So the friend of God was who? Was Abraham. The one who spoke to God face to face intimately was who? Moses. The one who heard God speak even in this still small voice and he went and did great things was who? Elijah. Amen. And Ezekiel even said, uh, Jeremiah even said, talked about how the voice of the Lord came to them. Jeremiah 9, I don't know the exact verse, I don't remember. He said, is not my word like a, like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces? Mark eleven twenty three 23 said, you'll speak to a mountain, a rock again, something in the way, and it will move away and get out of your way. But you have to have power and authority to make it happen. If you just speak as a man and say, well, I'm going to try this thing and maybe let's see if it works. God said, no, first of all, you have faith, but it's more powerful if you have his anointing. Lift your hands. Say, we need to cry for the anointing. If you want to fast and pray about anything, pastor, you want, to, you want to seek God about anything important, ask the Holy Spirit to come back and visit you. Let's do it right now. Holy Spirit, you've been uh, 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 chased away from churches. You've been chased out of the political arena. You've been chased out of people's houses. You've been chased away. But Lord, I, I, I thank you. you. You have to come back. And we, we miss you. The people miss you. They need you. And they're not getting delivered. They're not getting healed. They're not getting blessed. They're not getting empowered. They're not prospering. They're not coming out of poverty because your power and presence is not there in their life. Well, I feel the presence of the Lord just starting to move right now. Father, thank you for your angels. They're here right now. I see them. They're here. 
If you can walk with the Holy Spirit and please him, be filled with his presence and his power, there's nothing that'll be impossible to you. Mark 11, 24, the next verse said, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you'll have them. They'll be granted unto you by my Father who's in heaven. Now, one thing you need to do to have your spiritual life right is pray the prayer of 1 John 1 and 9. And say to the Lord, Lord, forgive me of all sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lift your hands. Let's pray that together right now. Some people have never prayed that prayer. Your life is full of sin. It's not that you're a sinner. It's not that you're wicked. You, you, you love God. You want to serve God. But you never cleared out the files. You never deleted the files. Like in a computer, you, you, you clear out the catch. You clear out the dead files. And many, many things you've spoken, people, things that have been spoken against you, things you've spoken against others, things you've done, things that you were supposed to do that you didn't do. You never repented of that. And, you, and yet you, you want all that God has. You know, the Lord had me say this this morning. I'll say it again. We think we're waiting on God, but he's waiting on us. 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, it is finished and that was the moment where we could have everything that we need. When, when the man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5 said, I have no man to help me. The angel came and troubled the water for healing, but somebody else beat me to the, to the water. And he laid there, the Bible says, for 38 years. Can you believe it? 38 years. And Jesus came up and stood before him and said, now I'm here. So what's your problem now? And Jesus rebuked him kind of in a way and said, take up your bed and walk. Get up, you're healed. Now carry your bed and get out of here and go about your life. The man at the gate beautiful was touched by the power of God that was moving through the apostles. And he was crippled there for a long time. In fact, when Jesus was walking out of the city past him, and then he was coming back, he saw him again. He was still there. And then later, it wasn't Jesus even that saw him. It was the apostles, the disciples. And he said, silver and gold have I number, such as I have given I unto thee. It didn't mean that they didn't have money. It just means, I really believe it means you, you didn't need money. You're asking money all the time, <laughs> and you're still crippled. So money's not going to heal you. You need the power of the Holy Ghost to heal you. You've been getting money, but now you need the Holy Ghost. That's really what they were saying, because they weren't broke. The apostles had all things in common. God got mad when Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5, he, 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 he um, he, he lied, and then the wife lied, and they fell dead over a real estate deal. They were selling property and bringing all the money from the sale of the property or land into the house to lay at the apostles' feet. So tell me they were broke. Try to prove it biblically. They weren't. They were very, they were very rich. They had all things in common, the Bible said. So the money issue was the fact of money itself was not going to heal the crippled man is the power of God. Can you say amen? amen? And we rarely see that in these days. Very rarely do you see real miracles, real miracles of healing and power. Let me tell you about another realm of the miraculous that people need. It's not just a touch for healing or what you would say deliverance from some, some demonic force or, or, or demonic thing, but to prosper in your life and come out of poverty and begin to walk in financial abundance. Lift your hands. Financial prosperity, blessing. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and adds no sorrow. Deuteronomy 8, 18, I'm the Lord your, my, thy God who gives you power to get wealth that I can establish my covenant. Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, I'll give you treasures of hidden places, all kinds of treasures, even things you don't know that are there for you. 
Deuteronomy 8 says, when you get all these things, houses and lands and properties and all kinds of money, all kinds of blessings, don't forget that it was I, the Lord your God, who gave you the power to have it. It wasn't just from you yourself. Don't forget the source. So the source is who? God. Hey. But then we need to walk in the biblical economic system. If you're not a giver or a generous person, you're never going to be rich in the way of the kingdom. If you make money, either you stole it, you did some decent business, or if you're in the government, you stole the money of the people. And if you did that, you're on your way to hell. And I hope you'll be happy when you arrive there because you can't do that and get away with it. Exodus 22 talks about what God thinks about a thief. It says even in the act now, maybe not, you can't do it maybe now because of the civil laws and all that. We're in the new covenant. But back then you could kill a thief and it's justified. And then if the thief is found, he needs to pay back multiplied times. And then the Bible says to the devil, when the thief is found, he needs to pay back seven times. But read Exodus 22. It's a whole chapter about what God thinks about a thief. The thief is the devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If anyone is a habitual liar, a cheater, a corrupt fool, a thief, a devil, an underminer, a deceiver, he is a devil. He's not a Christian. I don't care if he's in church. I don't care if he has Bible things on his phone, a ringtone. I don't care what he says. He's a devil on his way to hell. And if somebody that is deceiving people, lying to people, cheating people, stealing from people, that's not a servant of God. That's not a servant of God. The Bible says you cannot go on in the things of God and keep sinning. God forbid. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Over who? The righteous believer. And the Lord says, the righteous are going to flourish in this season like never before. Those that truly love me. Oh yes. And the, the wicked are going to be cut down and cut off. Isaiah 41.11 said, those who, who, who hate you or are incensed with you, They'll, they'll, they'll be as nothing. He said they'll be ashamed and disgraced, number one. Number two, you'll look for them and not find them. They'll become as nothing. And the third level, if they continue to strive with you, meaning they keep fighting you, they'll perish. And I found out the religious devil over all the years is always avoiding verse 11. We know the scripture, fear thou not, O thou worm Jacob. <laughs> I will fear not, I'll, withhold, I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand, the Lord said. But then verse 11, they always skip it over. And the, uh, about a year ago or so, the Lord had me find that verse. I read it, I said, wait a minute, I never hear anybody talk about this. I read it again, I read it again, and I've been teaching on it the whole last year. We don't understand that about the judgment of God. Let me tell you something, those who set a trap for you, they'll be trapped themselves. Proverbs 17, verse 13 says, Those that give evil to a good man, trouble and evil will never leave their house. And I invoke that and I speak that right now in the name of Jesus. We're not going to tolerate some things. I think the church needs to come back to the true power and authority. When you stand up and say, you fool, you're going to be cursed now because of the way you are. See, people that are too nice, they're scared to talk like that. And maybe a pastor thinks it might offend someone in the congregation. So they think, well, a prophet, I'm a prophet. Unto the nations of the office of the prophet. So people would expect me to say something like that. But I, I'll tell you something. God wants all his people to be prophetic. 1 Corinthians 14 said, the spirit of prophecy should flow amongst the believers. Amen. Amen. And quench not the spirit, uh, Thessalonians said. Despise not prophesying. And Moses said what? I wish all God's people would be prophets. Yeah. Lift your hands and say, Lord, please make me prophetic and don't leave me being pathetic. Say, Lord, make me prophetic and don't leave me being pathetic. 
and say, Lord, touch my house, touch my life, touch my mind, touch my body, touch my spirit, touch my people, touch my environment. Get rid of everything that's wrong around me from today in Jesus' name. We're going to leave some things behind in this year uh, as we go out of here. And if, uh, well, what time is it? Are you serious? I I'll be done. I'll be done. I we'll take a break. <sighs> the year is closing out in a few minutes. Some things we need to leave behind. Lift your hands. I didn't have time to tell you. I forgot this morning I was going to give an announcement, but I was in another flow uh, to say, write down everything you want to leave behind in 2023. You have 10 minutes. If you have a pen and a paper or type it on your phone <laughs> and you send your WhatsApp to yourself, and then when we hit midnight, delete it. <laughs> if, we, if we had a, fire, a canister with fire, we could write them down and throw them in the fire. But we don't have time to arrange all that right now, so we're just going to do it somehow. Take a piece of paper and a pen and write down a bunch of things that you want to leave behind. You don't want to carry into next year. It might include the names of some people. It might include the names of some sickness or some issues that you have. Amen. All right. Now the Lord says this. I'm going to expose to you and show to you and open your eyes to see all of the evildoers that are in your midst. People, even some people that maybe mean well, but they're standing in your way. The Lord says, I'm going to remove every obstacle out of your way now that you could run fast. And you cannot run fast with balls and chains around your ankles. You can't run fast and far with the spiritual luggage of yesterday's seasons in your hands weighing you down. You have to let it go. Paul said, I press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I don't count myself to yet have apprehended, but I press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And we're going... To the, to, the high, to the high road, to the high place. And sometimes you can't do that with everything and everyone. The Bible says, broad is the road that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to life, and few find it, and few go that way. It takes a choice to say, God, I want you. The Lord spoke to me this afternoon something very unusual, and it's personal, so I'm not going to say what it is, but I was shocked to hear it. <laughs> I was like, okay, thank you very much. I feel like uh, I'm not enjoying certain things about certain things, but uh, the Lord spoke to me something affirmative about his plan and where I am right now, what we're doing. He's very happy with that. I'm like, wow, okay. But well, we expect the avalanche and flood of heaven in every way. God can make you a blessing to me and he can make me a blessing to you. <clears throat> but I would say first, you need to be like the widow woman who gave what she had to the prophet Elijah and then the miracle happened of overflow. See, the people that just look for a handout, like give me something, help me, help me, help me, they're really killing the, the flow of the, the economic system. The economic system from the Bible is tithing, offering, Seed sowing, donations, alms, alms to the poor, first fruits. Are you doing all of that? First tithing and then giving. You know, the tithe is the 10%. And then what flows after the 10% is the offering. And the seed is something that could produce 30, 60, 100 fold. And the Bible says twice in Isaiah 60, 22, that a little one will become like a thousand, a small one like a strong nation. I will, the Lord will hasten it. It is time. A little one will become like a thousand. Deuteronomy 111 said, I'll make you a thousand times more than you are. How many can handle that? A thousand times more friends, a thousand times more favor, a thousand times more blessings in every possible way. The Lord wants to give that to us. The Lord wants to give that to us. Hey, the atmosphere is changing here. Good. Just, 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 just take a drink of that. The sweet presence of the Lord is moving here right now. Shambrosakari tele. 
Poverty was never the will of God for, for a good person. It might be for an evildoer, a despicable thief or a thug or a liar or a cheater, but it's not supposed to be for a sweet saint. Lift your hand and say, I'm not supposed to be living in poverty. I love God. Something's wrong here. Something's wrong around here. Something's wrong. And the Lord was speaking this morning about fixing things in your life, looking at yourself. If you ask the Lord, say, God, I want you to do something for me. I'm looking outside like I want something from there. God may hold up a big mirror in front of you and say, look at yourself. Look inside your mind. Look inside your heart. What's in you? What are you seeing? What are you not seeing? The scripture said, you have eyes to see, but see not. Ears to hear, but hear not. A heart to perceive, but you perceive not. The things that I want to do. And, uh, you know, God is an action God. Proverbs said the diligent hand makes, makes one rich, but the slack hand makes one to want. So if you, if you want to if you wanna really please God and get blessed, you need to be diligent. Let's pray. Faram Banchi. Satala, lift your hands right now. Can't chile satu. Koso brosha karente. Sale chate so uche taya tabasa kito. Ma brosha la babarente le vosaya. Fara brosha kura tele. I need to break in a minute because it's going at 12 midnight. And then I don't know. I wanted to deliver a, a prophetic word. Uh, maybe we'll have a minute to do that, but. The Lord wanted me to teach here for a few moments. Are you getting blessed already? Are you learning anything? The Lord says, get ready. I'm about to elevate. Mine elect. I'm about to elevate and promote. One of the major things that's going to happen in this season, like we've never seen it before, is elevation and promotion that's going to come from God. The hand and the power of God that's going to come upon people. It's going to be so amazing. People are going to look at you and go, ha. Oh my God, how did they get so blessed? And then you'll, if, you'll have to have a tough skin and be strong to ward off the haters and the jealous. Don't care about them. Care about you, what you're going to pr produce in your life. Care about God, what he's going to do for you. And when he wants to bless you, receive it all. And say, I have no shame about this. If he wants to give you, thank you very much. If he wants to give you something so great, uh, receive it in Jesus' name. I have a private jet on the way for my air travel in the days to come. I won't be ashamed of it. I'll fly it everywhere. I'll let people see it. I'll put it in the social media. I don't care. I can handle it. God has spoken so many times prophetically to me about that, I can't count. The things that are coming, the houses, the lands, the properties, the buildings, the offices, the studios, the sanctuaries, the networks of churches, the even millions of dollars coming into my hands, not shillings, dollars, millions and millions of dollars, to do what? To advance the kingdom all around the world. Because certain things you can't do unless you have the money to do it with. And the Lord knows that. He's Jehovah Jireh. The God who's a provider. Amen. He's Jehovah Shalom. The breaker and destroyer of chaos. The one who gives us his peace. Uh, he's Jehovah who wants nothing broken and nothing missing in our life. Shalom. He's Yireh Jireh. The father who sees our future and will see to it that it happens by giving us his provision. He's El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. He's the many-breasted one. My God, I feel the anointing flowing here. He's the one who wants to give us all the things that pertain to life and godliness. And some things you can't get done unless you have the resources. You can't get done unless you have the brilliance of people in your world. Lift your hands and wave right now goodbye. Goodbye to every problem. Problem. Goodbye to every setback. Goodbye to every wrong person. Goodbye to every affliction and oppression. And hello, wave hello to the good people, the good resources. Everybody
everything is coming into our hands right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. As we're about to cross over into the new year, I want everybody to get a seed in your hand like Apostle Moses did. I want everybody to get a seed in your hand for the new year. Right now, reach into your thing and get something tangible in your hand. Right now, rush to the altar and just drop it up here. I don't want to wait. I feel the anointing for this right now. Don't sit back down. Remain standing. We're going to midnight in three minutes. Get your seed right now. Come and just pour it here. Just drop it on the altar. Everybody, come, run, 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 run. Yeah. Grab something here and bring it. Just drop it here. For the new year, for the breakthrough blessing. I wanted to do this after, but I feel like uh, we need to do it right now. Quickly, quickly. Time is going. The clock is ticking. Run, 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 run. Get a seed, whatever you can do, and bring it and drop it here. The best you can do. If you have a thousand, if you have five thousand, if you need M Pesa, the M Pesa number we can give you. Sow a seed into this grace. Apostle Moses, since you were first, I'm not throwing it down there. It's just sacred money. I'm keeping it right here on the pulpit. Oh, for the children. It's right here. Thank you. It's right here. It's right here. My hand is on it. Be blessed, man of God. Your family, your house, your ministry, your organization, everything you want to see and have. Keep coming quickly. We're, we're going to midnight right now. Pastor, come up here because it's midnight already. So it's 11.59 on my, according to my watch. All right. So take us into the new year. We'll be back in a minute. I have a prophecy I want to deliver. That's all. And then we'll have our, our dear apostle come. Uh, all right. Lift your hands up right now. And say, Lord, thank you for your favor. Say, Lord, as we cross over into the new year, I'm leaving all the nonsense behind me, and I'm embracing everything new that's good. <laughs> in Jesus' name. I'll be back in a minute. Yes, yes, he's coming back again. He is coming back again to prophesy in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to close the ear? Are you ready? Are you ready? By the grace of God, by the grace of God. Then we are going to celebrate in the name of Jesus and say goodbye. Goodbye every poverty, every sickness, poverty. Goodbye 2023. Goodbye. And we are receiving a new package. 
right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, I bless all these musicians. I bless all the singers, all the dancers, all the people, all the media people here. Lift your hands. God is going to touch you with such grace. You're going to begin to see, and the new sound is going to come in the house. I see a choir. I see more music. I, I, I hear the sounds of heaven coming in this house. I see such great things. Father, we thank you for your son, uh, uh, our pastor here. We thank you, Lord, for the grace of heaven upon him. And uh, privately, I'll say some things to you. We'll have a private time because there's too many details to mention right now. I, I felt led to uh, talk to this lady here in the yellow. Can you lift your hands, dear? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard. It's okay. You can stay there. The Lord said this. He said okay, he's going to put you on a special diet. He's going to have some people to come to help you with nutritional things. And I see a lot of weight coming off of you. The Lord says you'll be like one, you'll be like two thirds of the person you are now. A lot of that stuff is coming out. And God's going to begin to touch you in the health. And you're going to live a long life if you can work on the natural things of working with the physical health plan. And God says, I'm, I'm, I'm sending them to you. Be ready to receive the counsel and the wisdom, and you're going to be totally transformed from the inside out, and your life will be long and prosperous in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in the nation of Kenya. We thank you, Lord, that there's coming a new movement of so many things. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, that you're going to begin to just answer by fire the cries of people, but not just what they prayed, really what you want. As you had Nehemiah say, God, be attentive to our prayer, God of heaven, the covenant-keeping God. So that was what they wanted, but the Lord said, I'm going to insert what I want. And the Lord said, I'm going to bring a movement against corruption in the land. And many are going to fall dead. Many are going to drop off the scene. Some in the government, some in the business arena, some in the societies. Because the judgment of God is going to come upon the evildoers. And the Lord says, it, it sounds strong, it sounds fierce, it sounds uh, rough, but the Lord says, I have to remove this system of evil in the land because it's cursed the 50 plus million people that are here, they can't progress because of the sins and errors of many that are standing in the way. And the Lord says, I'm gonna bring enlightenment to my people. I'm gonna release a prophetic grace across the body of Christ that people are gonna begin to see with new eyes, who's right, who's wrong, the discernment, the spirit of discernment is going to be turned up. The Lord says, I'm going to begin to cause a movement of the power of my spirit moving in my houses again. And the Lord says, watch for the, the marks uh, of, of, of those who've been greatly wounded and greatly fought and had great scars because of the battles they fought to carry the, the move of God. The Lord said, new grace, new anointing is coming upon vessels and the power of God is gonna to begin to change entire regions and cities and towns. The presence of God is gonna to begin to sweep through and it's not gonna be a good time to be a worker of darkness because many are gonna fall dead. Many are just gonna drop off because God has to remove them to clean the society. Many in the government, are going to be exposed for the thieves that they are. We've been seeing this since God had me prophesy this. A movement of heaven to bring uh, a movement of anti-corruption, if I can call it that. The Lord says, I'm moving to destroy corruption. I'm moving to destroy it in this generation. That even the next generation, should the Lord tarry and not, not have a, a, a reappeared back to take us out of here, if, if, if it should go on longer, the next generation should not know the, the way the things have been right now. Every day, 
even today again on the phone with a dear bishop friend. I hear the corruption of people, the tricky movements, the crooks, the liars, the thieves, and all these people say they're Christians. It's absolutely wrong. And the Lord says, I'm going to begin to judge. Oh, oh, you don't know the judgment, the judgment that's coming. There's judgment in the house. Now, I can speak this as a vessel because I'm not afraid because all I ever do every day of my life is to try to bless somebody. Amen. None of us are perfect. No man is perfect. But you have to have it in your heart that I'm not going to do anyone wrong. Even today, I was disrespected myself, and the Lord released a curse that the man doesn't know. I can write down lists of people of the names of, of men that are dead today because they oppose this servant of God that talks to you here. It's not a joke. But we live to try to be good to people. Not perfect, can't be perfect. We're imperfect vessels in an imperfect world serving a perfect God. But remember God said, be perfect, even as I'm perfect. Be holy, even as I'm holy. <clears throat> Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's a scary thought, isn't it? And the Lord says, I'm dealing with people. I'm dealing with the society. Everywhere you look, it's like a cultural thing to be corrupt, to be a lying, cheating, corrupt, thief, lying, cheating, undermining. You know, our bishop friend, he told me on the phone today, these guys that were saying they were going to help him promote his project, they want to steal it from him. He told me on the phone today, when I was up in your office, I was like, they can't do that. They didn't know what they're playing with. Lift your hands. People just like that. And these are people, these guys that are doing that. They're in church tonight somewhere, carrying on. And every day they just try to steal, kill, and destroy, just like their father, the devil. God is not the father of those people. Lift your hands. I prophesy there's going to be a separation, a separation of the wheat and the tares, the goats and the wolves from the sheep. And I'm going to begin to bring the pure, more holy into my presence and the power of heaven is going to fall upon many, but not many as far as percentages of the society. It's really going to be very few <clears throat> because few choose to walk in the way of holiness. Few choose to walk in the way of righteousness. Again, not that any man's perfect. How can we be? I'll tell you something. Even Jesus said, don't call me good. They said, good master. He said, don't call me good. Don't, don't, don't. I am here as a man amongst you all. I've not yet been resurrected. I've not gone to the cross. He didn't say all that, but that was coming. And he said, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not ascended. Don't call me good while I'm here. Call the Father good. So even Jesus, though he was pure, though he was perfect, and without sin, he even refused to take the title of good. So on the earth, no man can ever claim to be perfect, but we need to strive for perfection. Psalm 37, 37 says, Mark the perfect man, for the end of that man is peace. When you can have peace in yourself, though you've been done wrong, but you know you didn't do anyone wrong, it's a good place to be. I call the body of Christ as God's servant and his prophet to the nations. I call the body of Christ, even around the world, to come into a time of repentance. If you're going on to a fast <clears throat> in this next season, in the next few weeks, don't just pray for power and breakthrough, although we do that, but pray for the cleansing of your soul and pray for the cleansing of your life and pray for everything that's been a file, that's been against you. There's something wrong that's against you, something you said against another something you didn't do that you were supposed to do, something you did that you were not supposed to do, something, get rid of all of it, just clean it out and work on that. That's the fasting time. I feel myself, that the people like to do 21 days. I want to do a seven day water only fast and I, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but God's going to help me. I just feel a quickening on that and you could do your, all your programs how you want, but I just feel 
seven days. It even does something great to the body. The body resets itself. The body begins to go and eat even cancer cells in the body, things that are wrong in the body, fixes the organs, just water only. That's hard. See, I've done this thing where you take some food at night, maybe just drink juice and coffee, but just water alone for seven solid days. Can we do it? We can do it. The grace can be there to do it. I don't know what the date yet. I'll pick the date. <clears throat> we'll do seven days, water only. Because we need that cleansing. God is full of power, and he wants to do <clears throat> so much for us. But how much can we handle receiving from him? Lift your hands, everybody. Oh. <coughs> Now two things, the words that were spoken against you and me, we reverse them and send them back to the sender. The words we spoke erroneously and in the flesh or emotion against others, we repent right now and say, Father, forgive us. Take that out of our files. We don't want that in our history. We don't want that in our life. We repent, we apologize. Those that have wronged us, we forgive them right here. Forgiveness is not the easy thing to do when you've been done so wrong, but it's part of the gospel. We just do it. Now, they, now the forgiveness does not absolve the guilty from their guilt or their crime, but it, it frees you from them. When you forgive, you release them out of yourself. When you hold a grudge and bitterness and hatred and anger, and even you want vengeance, which is a, a human emotion, believe me, I know. You just let it all go and say, God, I turn this into your hands. How many ever felt in your life you wanted to take revenge? How many wanted to take revenge on somebody? You felt that? Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all haven't lived yet. <clears throat> y'all haven't lived yet if you can't lift your hand. How many ever felt like you wanted to take revenge? You wanted revenge against somebody? Lift your hand high, don't be afraid. This is not an ordination service for bishops where you have to say, you know, oh, I'm clean, you know, I'm coming with my robes on. Lift your hands up. My hand is up. Anybody that's been through battles, you felt all that. You have to release all that. You have to release all that. The Bible says in Romans, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. And the blessing of that is this, that you don't have to get yourself in trouble or entangled with evildoers to do it yourself. When God does it, there's no blame to you. Lift your hands. And God says, oh yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trace people up. I haven't forgotten. The Lord visited me and he said, I've not forgotten my son. I was in America, the Lord walked into my house and he said to me, I've not forgotten those that have wronged you and hurt, uh, you know, done evil things against you. He says, I'm going to follow them all up to the last one. Leave it with me. I said, thank you. I wasn't thinking about that. But he, the Lord came and visited me and reminded me of that. And we got to leave it to God. Lift your hands up and say, Lord, I release all of it into your hands. I'm not going to hold it inside of me. I let it go from today in Jesus' name. And the Lord says, yes, movements of my spirit are coming amongst mine elect. And I'm going to separate many, like I said in the book of Acts, I think it was Acts 13. Separate me, Saul and Barnabas, unto the work that I've called them to. Even as prophets and teachers and send them out. There was anointing and power there. God says he's reactivating offices. He's reactivating. He's activating new ministries that are going to be filled with power and they're going to begin to rise. It's not just going to be the churches you've known, the denominations, the organizations, the branches of this and that one. Although some of the leaders are good and some of them are my friends. But the Lord says, I'm going to raise up mighty people filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost. And I pray there's people in here tonight that are going to catch a fresh fire from the Lord and listening where if you're watching online wherever you are the Lord's anointing people 
And that's what's going to cause the breakthrough. Shabra shakar in deheso. Fabran solo shetoho. And I'm going to save people in the government. I'm going to visit many in the government, says the Lord. It caused a very, very real awakening for them. Some I'll even threaten and say, if you don't stop doing this, I'll kill you. The Lord will speak to some people like that and say, You've, I've watched you do this. I've watched you do that. I've seen you do this. You thought you'd get away. You got, you're getting away with it. You're not getting away with any of it. If you don't repent and change and you give yourself to me, the judgment, even the consequences of legalities and all that will come to them. The Lord says he'll give people a, a, a way of escape from those kind of judgments that they can serve him. People are asking about the economy and the problems and all this. Yeah, it's thick. It's terrible because men just want to do what they want to do for themselves. Lift your hands. <clears throat> but the Lord is going to cause a breakthrough. And it has to come from the church. People of another religion, they don't want to help you. They hate you. They came here to infiltrate. They want to take over. They want to do everything for themselves and their supposed God, or whoever they call his name. Who's, the name they call is not God at all. He's not Jehovah. So, I mean, these are people that are uh, of another thing. They're not going to help you. They'll never help you. They sit speaking in their own language, doing their own thing. It's all about them. In fact, certain people, when you see them having a conversation, they say the name of their country like 10 times in the midst of their conversation. They're speaking in a language you don't know, but that word comes up, meaning that's all they're talking about is themselves. They hate you. They don't want to help you. They're not for you. It's only from within that the church can rise in power. Lift your hands. God says, I'm going to raise people up to be financially prosperous, to be touched by heaven in the ways of favor that we've never, like we've never seen before. It's going to be astounding. And the cleansing that's going to go on. Some people have been really damaged by evildoers. The Lord says, I'm going to heal you and I'm going to set you free from all of that. And the Lord says, it won't happen again. It won't happen again because this time you've learned so much about because of what you've gone through that this time you could even help others not, not fall into those traps. And the Lord said, those that have done wickedly, oh, I can tell you stories personally. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. But we leave them into the hands of God. Let God deal with them. <clears throat> this is going to be the day of the mega church in Kenya and East Africa. Mega, mega, huge churches are going to be built. And people are going to come back to the houses of God that are carrying the anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're going to come. They're going to come by the multitudes. Many are going to be saved. People that thought they were saved, but they really weren't, they're going to get saved. There's going to be such a realm of conviction and power in the, in, the, in the movements of God that people are going to come in one way and they'll leave completely different. It's not just a matter of coming to church, being a part of a culture, being part of a society or something like that, a community. It's about receiving from the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands right now. God's going to begin to walk. I say, I, I say, says the Lord, I'm going to begin to walk into houses. I'm going to begin to walk into places. You're going to begin to see me visibly and tangibly in my power walking amongst my people. Father, where it's been dead, even for your servants, even for your preachers, visit them from tonight in new ways. Visit them in their dreams like you did Solomon. But Solomon did a great act. That's why he was visited by God. He slayed a thousand animals. He only had to do seven. He only had to bring seven animals by custom. Seven. Seven. He said, I want to bring 1,000. 
God said, whoo, Solomon. Before he could wake up in the morning, the Lord came to visit him. He didn't wait because he was so impressed with Solomon. People ask for those kind of visitations and say, well, I want to receive this. I want to receive. What have you done? Yeah. This is going to be the day of action. Great leadership is coming. Great leaders are people that are going to lead and cause people to walk into the ways of success because of the power of wisdom that they're carrying. And you cannot do anything great unless you have great wisdom and great power from heaven. Lift your hands. There are a few men that have that, but there are going to be many more in the coming days. We're going to begin to see God's favor. Now, this voice that speaks to you is the very one that spoke about the elections five times from the year 2000, the collapse of the Moy regime, and then Kibaki, Kibaki, Uhuru, Uhuru, and now Ruto. The every uh, uh, outcome of every election, God had me predict it in advance and even say it to the nation and to the world. The superhighway that you see over here, this, ex this eastern bypass, all the bypasses, the expressway, the train lines, the SGRs running across the country, none of that was there when God showed me visions and had me begin to prophesy these things. Even the end of the post-election violence, I spoke about it before it happened, that it would happen, and the message was brought from Raphael Tuju, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I was in his office at the time, in 2007, in the, in the middle of the year, August, I think it was, four or five months before the election. And the Lord said all these things and he looked at me with big eyes. He didn't know what to say. And he brought my message to President Kibaki and told him the whole thing. President Kibaki didn't know what to say. But then I met him in January, Raphael Tuju. I was at the Serena Hotel. He came and stood at my table, put his hands on the table, looked at me like this. He goes, hi. I looked at him and thought, oh. He says, do you remember me? I looked at him twice. I said, oh, it's you. Honorable Tuju, yeah. And he said, what you said in my office in August, we didn't know what to think. His Excellency was amazed, didn't know what to think. But now, everything you said is happening. Yeah. That was in the first week of January when the violence was going on. January 13th, you can have your seats. January 13th, the Lord had, us, had me to have a meeting. We couldn't have a meeting the week before because the violence, the soldiers had closed the city. They were standing in the street. I drove around just to see what it was like. <clears throat> Everybody was in their houses afraid. People were being killed all over the country. You heard the horrible things that happened then. January 13th, the Lord had me stand up. We had a meeting at the Methodist Guest House. In the place was packed. The biggest hall they have seats about 300. They say over 1,000 people showed up for the meeting. There were cars parked up the street on both sides past the second roundabout. One roundabout, another roundabout. Cars lined up. When we were driving to the meeting, I was like, what is going on here? And, and, they, and they, the, the driver said, uh, we got to the gate. And saw all the people, and they said that people have all come to hear you, prophet. I'm like, really? Are you kidding? So we went in there. I had to step over people. They were sitting everywhere, all the way out to the gate. They were on the stairs. They were in the restaurant downstairs. They were all the way out by the gate. I had to pass through all the people and get into the meeting. And at 7 o'clock, as I was closing the meeting, the Lord had me say this. Mass action will become mass nothing this week that was Sunday night and by Thursday it was over lift your hands the prophetic lift your hands the prophetic words stopped it the people were calling me from all over the world saying prophet what are you doing there you have to get out of there I said no I'm right where God wants me and the Lord used his voice to stop all that 1,300 people died. It could have been 100,000. If it wasn't stopped, it could have been a mini Rwanda. But God stopped it. Lift your hands. 
He spoke about it ahead of time, and then he stopped it from continuing. I'm telling you, the power of the voice of the Lord. Uh, uh, what is that? Hosea 12, 13 says, that By a prophet they were led out of the wilderness, and by a prophet they were preserved. Amos 3, 7 says, Surely the Lord God does nothing except he first reveal the secret to his servant. The prophet, a lion, has roared in the city. Who will not, who will not fear the Lord who has spoken? Who, who can then but prophesy? Meaning when the Lord speaks, he expects us to echo his voice. The power of the prophetic word creates new things. And when the Lord speaks about breaking corruption and cleansing the society, it must happen. And it must happen fiercely. And it's gone from this pulpit tonight. The word of the Lord is going out across the land and things are going to literally change in this country like you've never seen before. Take your eyes off of the economy. And now I know it's bad. We need to pray over that. But look at God and say, God, fill this vessel. Lift your hands, put your hands out, say, Lord, fill me. If God could fill you with his presence and power, if he could do it for many people, you'll see things you've never seen. And the breaking of things loose. I remember in 2007, when the Lord sent me here one time and the revival broke loose. And hundreds of thousands of people came to our events and made a lot of people jealous. Yeah, it was bad. But the power of God hit the place. Can I tell you, the whole economy changed. How does the economy change? By the opening of the heaven. Right now, the heaven is not very open in Kenya. I'll just tell you the truth. You go everywhere. Do you feel God? Can you go anywhere and walk and stand in the road out here? It's chaos, full of sin, full of all kinds of debauchery. Everybody's doing. Tonight, we were driving through. You hear noise, demonic. Things everywhere, everywhere. It, it, can you stand there and go, wow, I feel the glory of God. The place is so clean. Do you feel that? No. That's the problem. And the Lord says, stop looking externally and pointing at other people and begin to point at yourself and say, Lord, how can I be the one to bring change? One man will be like a thousand. A little one will even become like a nation. I said through my prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 60, 22. And the Lord says, get ready now to see this kind of empowerment. Empowerment of individuals. Shout out. Let's bow our heads and say, Lord, let it be me. Don't let it be somebody else. Let it be me. Lord, however you need to deal with me to convict my life to cleanse me, to change me, to make me more like you, to fill me with your power and presence. I receive your touch. I receive your touch. You know, the presence of the Lord is here right now, moving right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. Some of you are going to begin to weep in prayer and say, God, I'm undone, like Isaiah, Isaiah 6. He said, Lord, if you, if you can decide to use me, please do. But I'm a man that's unclean. He said that. Isaiah said that. He was the greatest prophet that ever walked in any generation. One of the greatest prophets. He wrote the longest book of any prophet. 66 chapters. And there are 66 books in the Bible. What an honor that God would give Isaiah 66 chapters when the whole Bible itself is 66 books. Yet when he, when he went before God, he said, we're messed up people, even me, myself. God, but here am I. Send me. Lift your hands right now. Say, Lord, forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, forgive me of anything wrong. Let me be clean in your presence. Fill me with your power and your presence. Anoint me. Fresh and anew tonight. This is the focus. This is the focus. Stop looking all externally everywhere, but look inside your heart. God, let God put a mirror in front of you and show you yourself. Show you yourself and say, Lord, please give me wisdom. Fill me with wisdom. Lift your hands right now. Put one hand on yourself. Lift the other hand up before the Lord. 
and say, Lord, fill me with your wisdom, fill me with your knowledge, fill me with the spirit of understanding, fill me with the spirit of counsel according to Isaiah 11, 2. <clears throat> and empower me so much, like it, the Bible said in Deuteronomy 1, 11, that I'll become a thousand times more, even more blessed, even more powerful, even more numerous, because a little one will even become like a thousand. Smith Wigglesworth, the great healing apostle of two generations or three generations ago, said, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. And I don't look at what I see, but I look at what I believe, and this will come to pass. And he was the man that raised 19 people from the dead and saw countless miracles. Why? Because it was real on the inside of him. Let me tell you what Smith Wigglesworth used to do. He used to pray and read the Bible every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, he'd open the Bible and read aloud and pray. 30 minutes would go by, he'd take a break, he'd do it again. He'd wake up in the morning and start dancing before the Lord and said, I don't care what I see or what's going on, I believe. And this is going to happen. Kenneth Hagin, the great teacher, the great, uh, was healed because he worked on himself and believed the word, and God made him an, an apostle to the nations. But when he was 16 years old, he was supposed to die. Oral Roberts, at 17, was supposed to die of tuberculosis. Lester Sumrall, the great apostle, was supposed to die at 17. And I knew him personally. I was with him in many cities. I sat on his private jet, which he called Angel Four, in New York. New Jersey, actually, where the plane was, uh, was there. And he died at 83 years old. But he was supposed to die at 17. But he received the power. Lift your hands. You don't understand how <clears throat> amazing this is. We come to church before what? You know what God's definition of the church is? A place of empowerment, a place of training for reigning, a place to learn the ways of God. A place to be empowered that when you come in one way, you leave another way. And after hearing all of this tonight, you can't remain the same. There's an impartation going into you. Carry it to others. Receive the touch of heaven. In Jesus' name. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Apostle, there's a new fire coming upon your ministry and your work. Who's this lady? Is she with you? Oh, she's your assistant. Stand up too. The Lord is touching the ministry with fire. Miracles are going to begin to happen. And the Lord is talking to you, even through this message, some things inside of yourself God's going to have you to look at. And some change and transformation is coming from within you. Some cleansing of, you know, whatever it is, and some, some renewing and new things. And God says, I, I found a, a heart of mine in you, my son. And you're going to begin to see the miraculous flowing in the days to come like you've not seen. Everybody stretch your hands out toward our pastor here. Stretch your hands out toward our pastor, Josh Fat. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this house being a house of miracles. You know, this afternoon I saw this, like, clean this up here. Put lights on. Put the chairs up there because people are coming. Put, put better lighting in here. Believe God. Put some nice lights in here. May beautify the house. Change the carpet if you have to. Whatever it is. Just get everything beautiful. Because some people need to see an elegant place. They want to come and make it their church. The Lord says, I'm going to give you the breakthrough. This morning I was really wondering, you know, what's next for you. But I feel even right here God's going to do something. Before you would ever have to move or do anything else, God's going to give you the breakthrough right here where you are. 
And Father, we thank you that the order of the devil that's been over this region is reversed in Jesus' name tonight. The power, of the, the power of heaven, the angels are going all through the land. Father, raise up people, touch them. Anoint people, they'll come and say, I, I, I don't know what, what's happening to me, but something is happening and their lives are gonna change. Father, I speak again, I see it again, the government, in the government arena, people that have just done such wicked things, they're gonna come to their senses, they're gonna be dealt with by God to begin to serve him and walk with him. Thank you, Lord. Father, we command the realm of the effects of the bad situations in the economy to be overturned and turned around because you're gonna prosper your people. You know, sometimes when you look out here and look out there and you don't see what you want and there's so many issues, people crying all the time about all kinds of things going on, you got to look within yourself and say, God, I'm the answer. Prosper me and I'll be a blessing. Abraham was Abram of the Ur of Chaldees. They were, they were idol worshipers. His father, Terah, was not a good man. God said, get out of there and go to a place I'll show you. Abraham had nothing in the external. God built him from within. Lift your hands. Moses was blessed to be the deliverer. It happened within him. It wasn't bestowed upon him, even by a wicked Pharaoh, where he grew up in the house of Pharaoh. Did Pharaoh have the anointing or did he have the devil? Of course he, he had the devil. How did Moses get raised up? How did Elijah get raised up? Where did he come from? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, I mean 1 Kings 17, 1 Kings 17, <coughs> Elisha the Tishbite came and there he was. But where did he come from? Who's his predecessor? Who laid hands on him? Doesn't say. He was touched by God. So we need to stop making excuses. You know my calling and my, the anointing that we're carrying to the nations of the world for all these years, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me and put it on me himself. It didn't come from the hand of a man. In fact, when I got saved, I hadn't been to a church. I hadn't been to a church. The Lord visited me himself. So the reference point of my power came from heaven. And I don't work for man. I don't work for any church. I don't work for any organization. They work for me. I work for him. I don't work for money. I don't preach for money. Money comes and serves me. Praise the Lord. I'm not out looking for blessing. Blessing's out looking for me. I don't have to look for money. Money's looking for me. Why? Because I'm called and I'm on the assignment. Get that. Catch that. It happens within a man. It happens within a woman. Boy, it's powerful tonight. Yeah. Brother, I love you, but if you had to interpret, we'd be here till four in the morning. At least I'd be able to get through this quickly. If anybody, bless your hearts, if you need Swahili, we should take this video and have a Swahili version. So you could hear Swahili, Swahili, Swahili. Praise the Lord. Ubada Kiwe, Gioni Jema. Lala Salama, but not yet. You can have it. I, I was with the Maasai people a few weeks ago, and I had, uh, we interpreted it to Maasai. And the first message I did outside, I did in English. I said, take this and put it in the Maasai language. And God bless the Maasai people. The prophecy that God had me give the Maasai people is astounding. It's never happened before, I'm sure of it. <clears throat> the Lord spoke so highly of them, how he's going to deliver them, push them out. Push them out even to be leaders, even to be industry makers. Oh, all kinds of grandiose things he wants to do with the Maasai people because he found a beautiful heart in many of them. Promotion comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from man. Lift your hands. The promotion you're looking for, man cannot help you with it. 
Most people just want to do things for themselves. They don't care about other people. They care about themselves. But God cares about us. Oh, yes. And he's the source. Lift your hands. Father, thank you for the riches and the wealth, the healing and the health, the peace of mind, the well-being in our soul, our emotions, our life. Everything good is going to happen to us, for us. And Father, I prophesy right now that people are being commanded by God to give us resources, to give us land, to give us vehicles, to give us property, to give us, men will give their lives to serve in the vision. Women will give their lives to serve in the vision. People are coming to work. We'll have the best of the best, what I like to call the dream team, TBOTB. TBOTB, the best of the best. The dream team, the greatest people, the most gifted, skilled people. Thank you, Lord, for the television networks that will reach the multitudes around the world. Thank you for the millions of dollars that we can move everywhere before this thing is all done and expand your kingdom to the ends of the earth. My vision is this, to reach as many people with the word of the Lord as is possible through every means of communication in the shortest amount of time and the most, in the most brilliant ways. And God is a master of making that happen. The vision, the calling, the election that he has for you, the mission and the assignment that he has for you to do and fulfill, God is the one that gave it to you, and he's the one that's going to see you through into it. Lift your hands. Promotion doesn't come from the man. It comes from the Lord. Men can favor you and bless you. But always remember, according to Deuteronomy 8, how he said, when you get blessed with all these things, remember it was I, the Lord, who gave you power to have all these things. It wasn't from men. Don't ever forget it. Father, we throw ourselves into your hand. As I close, I want to say this. We throw our life into your beloved hands. We believe you. Now, I love to teach on faith, and I didn't have time to do it. We'll do it in another time. But let me just say one thing about faith and another thing about leadership. Everything rises and falls based on leadership. If leadership is good, great things happen. And the righteous are there, the nation flourishes. But when the wicked are there, the nation mourns and moans and has problems that can't be fixed. But faith is when you see something bad, but you still call it something good. You, you don't look at what you see, like Smith Wigglesworth said, I don't go by what I feel, I don't go by what I see, I go by what I believe. And my faith is working for me. Our covenant with God is to believe him. And if you've ever doubted him or said, Lord, I don't see it, stop it, repent of that, and say, Lord, I put my hand in your hand. Put your hand up right now and just grab like you're grabbing someone's hand. Let him put his hand in your hand and say, say, Lord, please forgive me for any unbelief. Please forgive me for doubting anything. Please forgive me if I ever did. And keep speaking faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, but he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11:6. Hebrews 11, 1 said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I like to say yet, because when we believe, we will see them. The things we desire when we pray, believing we receive them, we will have them. It's our faith that unlocks it, and it's our expectation that brings it to us. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's our faith that unlocks it for us, opens it for us, and it's our expectation that draws it to us. Another thing I have to say, become a giver. Become a giver. If you don't like it, repent. If you don't think that's a good thing to do, you're very wrong. Because the generous one becomes like a well-warded garden. Proverbs 11.25. Proverbs 11.25 says the generous one will become like a well-watered garden. Isaiah 58 says when you reach out to the afflicted soul, God will turn on your light in your nighttime. When you help somebody, he'll help you. When you sow, you'll reap. I have a friend in America. 
He was just given a Falcon 50 jet. Falcon 50. That's not a small plane. It was given to him by a company. He said, free of charge. Here it is. We're going to deliver it to you. They had it painted. They had it renovated, all of that, and brought it to him and delivered it to his, his airport. And he has his own hangar next to the big giants of the world corporations. He has his own air, air hangar with his Falcon 50. How did he get that? He said this. He said, I don't know what seed I sowed, where I sowed, what, which one I did to unlock a jet. He started to fly private because he needed to for his schedule. And he had the money coming. Now, here's what he said. I want to teach you something. This is why I don't want to take long on this. I don't want to take long on anything. I'm trying to finish. But the Lord said through him, and I caught it. He said, the, the top givers in my ministry, I don't know their names. He said, I don't look at that. I don't look at that. I don't even know who they are. I don't study who's doing what. He said, watch, this, watch me now, watch me now. This is important. He said, I focus on my giving. I want you to get that. Say, say it out loud. Say, Lord, help me to focus on my giving. Some of you are so stingy. You're so full of... You, you, you're, you're a receptor. You're like a... You're, you're a well of pollution because you just take, 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 take. You brought a curse upon yourself. Give your way out of it. Lift your hands. I found a young man, a young evangelist. He needed a, some furniture for his house. I had something for his house. I, I bought it for him and I... Gave me some money. Someone else the next day needed something. I took care of that. I just want to sow every day. Find something to sow every day and God will begin to bless you. Make, it, make giving your lifestyle. Do you know, one of the greatest men of God in our generation, Bishop Dag Hewitt Mills from Ghana, was here some weeks back. And I went to be with him in Nakuru. And my prayer was that he would lay hands on me. I didn't know how it was going to happen. They sat me in the front row in Apostle John William Kamani's church. Seats over 10,000 people. Beautiful, beautiful place. And I even had time with Apostle Kamani. It's impossible to get an appointment with him. His people that want to see him, they say at least six months can go by and you can't, you can't find him. He's so busy. And sure enough, he came out. His protocol was all around. Like, oh, no, he's, ta he's taking off. He's going somewhere. And the apostle waved them all off and said, no, the prophet, come. And we had 10 solid minutes to stand there. He held my hand the whole time. I grabbed his hand. I pulled it. I put it on my belly. And we talked, prayed together. And he said this to me. He said, I I'm going to have you come to minister in our church. Yeah, at the right time favor. Bishop Dag Hewitt Mills was there and he said this about Kenya. He called it the land of zero offerings. He said it's the worst in Africa. Lift your hand and say, Lord, we repent. He said, I could go to another country and 500 times more than what's given in Kenya can be given from another country. But Kenya, the people don't want, they just don't give. They don't give. Do you know what? You should believe God that you have stacks of money. Lift your hands. And you take some. You throw it on the altar. You help someone in need. You sow into ministry. Lift your hands. I know I'm speaking a foreign language here to so many people. But I'm prophesying. Lift your hands right now. Come on. Don't fight me. You devil from hell. You poverty demon. You taker devil. You stingy devil. Come off the people in Jesus' name. Make it your life and mission to become a giver. Will you do that? Will you do that according to the word of God? Your people are. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? It's like fighting a bull running at me here. But I'm more powerful than them. It's like 10 hippos running at me and I have to see what I'm going to do in, this, in the realm of the spirit. Lift your hands. I command you, lift your hands before God. I say, Lord, make me a giver. I say, Lord, I repent for not giving. Lord, I repent for being stingy and cheap. Lord, I repent for wanting free things. Lord, I repent for wanting everybody to give me something, but I give them nothing. 
I repent. Start to be generous and watch God. Now, in the Bible, he said how he would bless the generous person. Did he lie? When Jesus said in Luke 6.38, he said, give. Did he lie? When he said, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, John said, 3 John 2, did he lie? When he said in Psalm 35, 27, I take pleasure in the prosperity of my servant, did he lie? When he said, I want to bless you and make you a blessing to many nations, did he lie? It's all here. But many people don't believe because they don't want to do it. They don't want to do that. I command you in Jesus' name, become a giver. I want to help you. I want to push you because you'll, you'll see the blessing. You have financial problems. You're always in tr trouble. Start to give. Start to give. A woman wrote me, when she wrote me a text the other night, she said her husband promised to give her property and money. He's in the United Kingdom and she's here in Kenya. Before I could even pray, she wrote me and the message touched the mantle that's upon my life. And boom, the guy called and sent a big sum of money. Lift your hands. Just like that. Because I'm carrying that grace. Before I even prayed about it. And she sent the tithe right away. I could show you in my phone. Several times. Every other day now for the last week or eight days, nine days. She's been sending because the guy keeps sending money. And he didn't do it before. Lift your hands. There's an anointing for prosperity. There's an anointing for breakthrough. We're carrying that. And I want to see people flourish. Business people. Businesses to be birthed and born. Businesses. New things. Ideas that you never had. That God can begin to bless you. Oh. It's going to be so good. The sky's the limit. How much, on how much God can bless you. Just wave your hand to the Lord. Say, Father, here I am. Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Use me. Here I am. Anoint me. Here I am. Talk to me. Here I am. Tell me what to give, where to give it. He says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He'll show you what to sow. Some people have problems in their life. They're full of problems because they don't give. They don't give. When you give, you release something back to yourself. Amen. Very important. All right. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you really love me? I love you. God loves you. He loves you more than I ever can. He loves me more than you ever can. Lift your hands and let's celebrate. <laughs> Clap your hands, yes. Shakarata la bahayata. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Let's stand up and give God one clap ahead of praise. Come on, give him one a shout. Break the sting open in the spirit here in Jiru. Jiru is going to be a place of power, a place of blessing, a place of the Holy Ghost. Clap your hands. Come on, let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. And Jiru, the land of the Holy Ghost. Let's, let's rename it. Let's rename it. Let's claim it back. The devil's being cast out. Witchcraft is being destroyed. Sorcery and occultism is being destroyed in the name of Jesus. And this is going to be a land of God's blessing. I prophesy that this place is going to be built up. I don't know how, because some of the places look so ugly. The roads are broken. The buildings, they look so bad. But I see new things being beautified here. This town and this region right here, something's going to begin to happen new, afresh and anew, because of the touch of God. God wants to use you in this revival. Lift your hands as we're going here. Say, Lord, make me a revivalist. Make me a carrier of power. Make me a, car a carrier of your glory. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing that makes me rich and has no sorrow. Come on, tell him, Lord, I thank you for your blessing 
that makes me rich and has no sorrow, according to Proverbs 10, 22. And I thank you, Lord, for empowering me to be a giver, a giver. You know, the leading archbishop has the biggest church in Nairobi. His name is Harrison Nanga, my friend. God's had me preach for him 10 times in this last year. 10 times, you know, he doesn't invite people. Even the stadium last year. Tonight, a year ago, I was in Kasarani Stadium right here speaking to 30,000 people. I was the main speaker, me and him, me and him, me and him. And he doesn't, he doesn't, he didn't invite anybody else. I watch him, he's a giver. He gives all the time. He gives millions as seed. Anywhere he sees somebody great, he plants a seed. Anywhere he can bless a project or help somebody, he does it. And look at, look at him. Look at him. We were there in June, and God had me prophesy about the expansion that was coming. In fact, several meetings. Expansion that was coming upon his ministry. He was running about 7,000 on Sunday morning. Seven, then it got to 8,000. Now, he's almost 12,000 people coming to his church on Sunday morning. Lift your hands. You think that's an accident? And the place is completely packed. There's no seat anywhere. He told me after one Sunday service, he said, Prophet, I ought, we were upstairs in his office. He said, I ordered 1,000, 1,000 extra chairs. And I don't know what happened. Everybody came from I don't know where, and they filled all the chairs. Lift your hands. They just came like that. That's a move of God. It's not by your clever marketing, your clever advertisement. He doesn't do that. He's working in the realm of the spirit. That's how you get your breakthrough. Lift your hands. Working it in the realm of the spirit. Become a giver. Testify. I want to hear your testimony. I give you the challenge. I want to hear your testimony. I'm not finished, but I'm ending because I'm done. I got to go. But we'll pick it up again another time. There's more to share. Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed tonight? Have you heard a lot of things from the Lord? And uh, however many minutes we went, to just the hand of God. We didn't plan it. It's just the flow of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands. Father, I release the fire upon this people in Jesus' name. Let a new anointing flourish and come upon this land. Every vessel that wants to serve you, that's been oppressed, attacked, bewitched by all kinds of evil forces. I break those things and cast them out in Jesus' name. And this is going to be a place of open heaven, an open portal in the realm of the spirit to this region right here. And thank you, Lord, for the entire city of Nairobi. Matter of fact, I was with Apostle Moses when the Lord that time we, I released the word of the Lord about a new movement coming to Nairobi. In fact, I was with him at the Nation Center over there, right in the heart of the city. And the Lord said, I'm releasing a new movement. And then he said, second, he said, anyone that opposes it will fall down and not get up again. And the third thing God said was economic empowerment. It seems like it has evaded people. It's evaded the nation. There's problems on every side. There's all kinds of things going on. It's unpleasant. But the Lord said, I've not forgotten my promise. And the way you're going to prosper is me and you together, says the Lord. Lift your hands and close your eyes. Me and you together. Me and you together. Me and you together. Nothing shall be impossible to the one who believes me. With man, things can seem impossible. But I'm the God of the impossible. With me, all things are him possible. All things with God are him possible. With him, I can make a new word, him possible, H-I-M. Him possible means when man thinks can seem impossible, but with him, everything is possible. The Lord says, you and me together, you and me together are going to win this war. And the victory is ours in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Matthew the Fourth. I love you. I'll see you again another time. God bless you. Let's give Jesus a mighty hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Come on. All right. I, 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 I,
I'm not much on promoting things, but I do want you to get a copy of this book. If you could get a copy of this book tonight, how many would like to have one? You could see us before we leave. I think, is there a table somewhere? Do we have a table somewhere for the books? Where is it? It's right here in the front. Okay, the, my books are there. These are a thousand shillings, and tonight, just tonight, I'll let you have it for 500. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's my seed. I'm, I'm sponsoring half, all right? So just for 500, grab a copy. We'll have a few there. Now, the service is going to continue. Great power. How many are ready for the next phase, the next round? We're going to shift gears. Hey, hallelujah. Receive our, our great pastor, apostle Josh Fat, as he comes. And the Lord, the Lord is really renewing you, renewing your strength. He's going to give you fresh vision, son. He's going to give you fresh vision. New things from heaven are coming. And the Lord says the breakthrough is just ahead of you. You're stepping out from what was and stepping into the new thing. Take care of this balcony. Put the lights up there. Put the chairs up there. Fix the stairs. Fix the place up because people are going to be coming here. The kid of Lord some praise. This is the house of revival. Amen. All right, blow me a kiss. Thank you. Now let's give, I, I feel it, let's give Jesus one. <sighs> Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, come on. Bears of 10,000, bright and morning star. King of kings, Lord of lords, amen, faithful and true. The bishop and overseer of our souls, the bread of life, the great shepherd, the day star, the I am, the day, the day spring, the day star, the bright and morning star, the giver of life, Emmanuel, amen, God with us, the everlasting father, the mighty God, the prince of peace. Let's lift our hands and worship him. He's all glorious, he's all powerful, he's all victorious. And he's our king and our God and our best friend. Lord, we love you tonight. We worship you. We worship you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Say, Menjiro. Ah, already the Lord has spoken. No reverse, no turning back. Man of God, the prophet in the house, God bless you so much. We love you and welcome again and again. Because the Bible says, the friends of God is friends of us. So you are a friend of this church from today, and this is your home. Whenever you want to come back, you are free to come. My friend are your friends, in Jesus' mighty name. How many are happy tonight? Amen, amen, amen. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet, as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed. <laughs>